Today on Focal Point, we have a guest who can teach us a thing or two about cooking and hospitality. Take a look at the culinary arts program and hear what students have to say about what the food trucks have to offer. Stay with us. Hi, welcome to Focal Point on CCP-TV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. I'm Darlene Montz, a student in the Communication Arts Curriculum. Today I'm here with Associate Professor of the Culinary Arts and Hospitality Management Program, Mark Kushner. Mr. Kushner is a graduate of Florida International University. There he earned a degree in hotel management while taking a minor in restaurant and food service. He has received many accolades, including the Star of the Industry Award from the Greater Philadelphia Hotel Association and the Jane Abrams Award for his community service work with autism. He also manages a number of businesses such as Brook Lake Resorts, Bastille, a rock and roll club, and a 7-Eleven. Welcome, Mark. Welcome. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Kushner, what exactly is hospitality management? Hospitality management is the management of people and businesses within the industry of hospitality, which is lodging, hotels, restaurants, travel, tourism, conference, okay. convention, event planning, basically anything having to do with eating, sleeping, recreation, or entertainment is a part of the hospitality industry. What can a student expect from enrolling in a culinary and hospitality arts program here? They can find a number of courses that okay. are both lab and lecture. Okay. The culinary students will have courses in everything from elementary food to quantity food to catering, serve safe and sanitation. Okay. And the hospitality side, we have lodging management, we have marketing for the hospitality, food and beverage management, food and labor cost control. Okay. So they really have a gambit of courses. What type of jobs are there in this field? Well, the jobs are great. I mean, we're talking about the city of Philadelphia. We're becoming the number two restaurant town in the country. Most importantly, in between 2015 and 2017, mm -hmm. we have 12 new hotels opening in the city itself. So we have jobs at every level, both in the kitchen as well as in the dining room and management as well as labor. Is there an opportunity for students to show their creativity in this program? Our students are very creative, trust me. But most importantly, that's demonstrated in the culinary area when they get projects where they have to come up with the menus, produce the menus, and produce the products. Okay. And in the other areas, particularly in the management courses, mm -hmm. they're given group projects and they really have to show their creativity and work as a group to bring that project to fruition. I've heard, but I've never had a chance to attend any of these luncheons that the students put on. Tell me about that. Well, it's really a form of vestibule training. It's a mock environment, but we use real customers. Uh, we take reservations online. It's a white tablecloth restaurant. Okay. So we have one class, the culinary class of that semester will be doing the food preparation. Mm -hmm. The dining room operations course okay. will be running the dining room and being supported by the baking class. We take reservations. We run a white tablecloth restaurant on campus here once a week, and it's for real. Tell me, how can I make a reservation? Well, it's very simple. You can always look us up on www.cam at ccp.edu, or you can contact me at my email at mkushner at ccp.edu. But we sell out fast, so book early. Okay, great. I will. When I make my reservation, will I have a choice in what's on the menu? Oh, absolutely. There's a choice on the first course of soup, salad, wrap. <sighs> On the entree, there's always two choices, and then, of course, there's a selection of desserts. The students will take your order at table side. As a matter of mm -hmm. fact, we use the latest in technology. Instead of just writing on a pad and paper, we're actually using wireless tablets, so your order is being taken at the table and literally beamed right into the kitchen. So I heard the terms the front of the house and the back of the house. What exactly does that mean? Okay. What the terminology really means is that anybody that comes into direct contact with the guest mm -hmm. is front of the house. Anyone not in contact with the guest is back of the house. Culinary obviously is in the back of the house, mm -hmm. but in the hotel, so it would be housekeeping, reservations, and accounting. 
And in the front of the house, obviously, that's the dining room, the front desk, the event planner. And anybody who meets in direct contact with the guest is front of the house. Anybody supporting that activity is back of the house. One could not survive without the other. And as much as we like to think we rule in front of the house, where would we be if nobody was doing the food preparation in the back of the house? So it really is a team effort. Absolutely. Now, you know I'm a theater major, and I heard that the front of the house is similar to theater. Well, a matter think? of fact, in the Dining Room Operations course, one of their early orientation seminars talks about the act of the show. I mean, after all, a little kept secret is, is that you could eat just about anything we make in a restaurant at home, but you're coming for the experience. And when those lights go on and the candles are lit and the music is playing and the food comes out and the dome is lifted, that's the show. Last but not least, is your kitchen anything like Chef Ramsay? Well, you have to remember, that's like what we're doing today. It's a TV production. Yeah. Chef Ramsay has a number of restaurants and he has a number of different kitchens. Okay. But the idea of having two teams in the same kitchen fighting to produce a meal is a little bit far-fetched. Mm -hmm. But I'd say our kitchens are a little bit more unique. And again, great use of technologies in our kitchens as well. And the students are really here to learn. The emphasis here at Community College, mm -hmm. though, is yes. the student is the true guest or client yes. in this environment. Thanks for being with us, Mark. Hopefully, we'll get to see a television show of you and your students. Thank you very much. It's you been know. my pleasure. Let's take a look at the Culinary Arts Program. In class today, we were doing uh, sponge cakes and chiffon cakes. Basically, they're going to make a jelly roll a Swiss roll, and uh, because this is the next to the last class, uh, they're going to make a chiffon cake. They have a choice of making a yellow chiffon cake or a chocolate chiffon cake. We're going to cool it, wrap it, and then next week, they're going to decorate. I knew I wanted to pursue culinary arts for years, like I've known since I was 10. I, I always knew in my heart that I wanted to be a chef and stuff. I just love what comes with it, with the, the prestige of being called a chef and, you know, just the hard work that goes into it. I mean, I've been cooking since I was old enough to reach a stove uh, with my family, my, my grandfather, my, my mother, my father. Uh, and every job I've ever had as a teenager going on has been in cooking, but I wanted to get some more formal training. I'd never really had a proper schooling, so I decided to come here. When I was a teenager, because I have a lot of food allergies, so I like to, I have to cook a lot for myself. And so I kind of, I'm used to cooking, so I kind of wanted to go into a field of cooking. I really do enjoy like the creativity of cooking and plate designing and making your own dishes and representing yourself out of what you create. So the first part was putting together and making a sponge. You have to heat the sponge up so it takes the sugar and that's basically an egg sponge you put together and then you're going to go right into it after you foam it up. That's where you get the volume because it's heated. Anything that's heated expands. Next thing that's going to happen is you're going to sift in in this case, for the Swiss roll, it was some cocoa powder, two ounces of cocoa powder to 11 ounces of uh, cake flour. Sift it in, stir it up, and finally, while someone is sifting in the cocoa powder and the flour combination, the third person is making your egg whites, and as soon as all the flour's in, fold it in. Now you fold in your egg whites. That's done in the baking pan and right in the oven. After I graduate, I'll keep working in the field, which is what I'm doing right now, but the end goal is that I want to be a culinary professor. I would like to, after I graduate, go around the country and help other people with like food, like food intolerances and food allergies and teach them how to better cook for themselves. I want to go on to a four-year school to see if I can major in culinary and also have a minor in something else. For my short-term goal, I do want to open a catering company um, where I will come to your house and um, basically I will, me and a partner, we will cook for you and we'll do the dishes for you. Anything you want, we'll, we'll make a very, you know, lovely night for you. My plans when I graduate from here is to work in a kitchen for a couple of years and eventually I'd like to actually own my own restaurant. Maybe I should get a few tips from them before my next dinner party. Being a student sure can make you hungry, so let's hear what some students have to say about the lunch trucks on campus.
My favorite food truck is Jamaican D's. Either the Mexican food truck or the one or the other truck beside it. It's the second one from the corner, Chinese food. Well, if I had to choose what my favorite food truck is, I think it would be the last one. I, they don't really have a name for it, but they have uh, like the best breakfast food, bacon, egg, and cheeses. Well, the food trucks are more affordable and the food is better. Uh, I would have to say food trucks because it's a little more convenient. I definitely prefer food trucks over the cafeteria food. <laughs> I never ate cafeteria food to rate the cafeteria food, so I don't know. Mm, I had to say a five. I'm gonna give it a seven. I would have to rate the cafeteria food a solid two, and I <laughs> be happy to explain because I think it's overpriced and the quality of the food is just not too good. That's just my opinion. My favorite meal to get from the food truck is uh, bourbon chicken with rice. It's really good. I love Chinese food. Bacon, egg, and cheese. Pork bacon. Egg and cheese. <laughs> Emphasis on the pork. <laughs> Dining at the food trucks is very unhealthy. It's a very unhealthy habit, especially when you're stressing over this, like, stuff, like your papers and everything. It's about how much you indulge. It's just all about how what you do. You can't put it all on, you know, them. They're providing a service, but it's how about you control your portions of food. I indulge in the food trucks maybe once a week. Every day. I try not to all the time, maybe like twice, twice a week. Well, I started a strict diet this semester because I actually gained weight last semester from eating out so much. So I haven't really indulged in the food truck at all this semester. The food truck that I really think CCP needs is kind of a dessert truck. Like I think, like you know, like if you go on Temple's campus, they have an Asamina food truck that sits right outside, and I think that would be a good money maker. Maybe like a healthy smoothie, like a green drink. That's what I'm drinking now, and they're fairly easy to make. I'm sure they make a killing. Maybe I should get a truck and try it. <laughs> Now I'm hungry. Well, that's it for today. I want to thank my guest, Mark Kushner, and thank you all for watching out there. You have been watching Focal Point, the Community College of Philadelphia Magazine show on CCP-TV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. All the segments for Focal Point are produced by the students in the digital video production curriculum. I'm Darlene Mutz. See you next time.